Okay, I mean, a, this is a very, this is a very big question. Mm -hmm. um, I, let, let's, in fact, let's deal with some, uh, a couple of things first. So, what do we mean by work? That's the first thing. Okay, okay. what does it mean by work, and what are you, what are you aiming for? I yeah. think one of the, the, a, a lot of the low carb diets were originally devised to help diabetics maintain their blood sugar levels. Yep. Okay, and in that sense, because low carb, so in other words, in particular, low refined carbs, that is very useful. And if you're type two diabetic, you shouldn't be. You should be minimizing your refined uh, carbohydrates, so eating more whole grains. And so, in that perspective, helping you maintain blood blood sugar levels, in particular, if you're diabetic, a, a, a low carb diet um, is actually incredibly effective. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's let's get that out of the way. There's no yeah, so there, tick there is in, yeah. tick. Okay, incontrovertible. Yeah. Now. Does it work for weight loss? Because it's it's gone beyond I'm trying to maintain my blood glucose levels because I'm diabetic, because most of us are not diabetic, mm -hmm. to, well, this is a healthier way of eating. It's a, and I'm able to actually maintain weight loss. Okay. Now, now it depends what you're talking about when you talk about low carb, all right? Because obviously there are severities of low carb. Yeah. You can have yeah. something relatively benign, like something like um, Atkins Light, <laughs> right? And all the way to the ridiculous carnivore, okay? And so, and 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 everywhere in between. So, so now we begin to talk about, oh, okay, well, now I have a whole spectrum of carbohydrate re re restriction. So, a big reason why it does work for weight loss, and it does work for weight loss, actually, uh, uh, at least in the short term for for, mm -hmm. for some people, is not because it's it's not primarily because it's low in carb. I want to pick my words carefully. Um, it's quite high in fat, actually, uh, but it's because it's high in protein. Okay? Yes. And, and, and protein is and has been known for a long time. This is, I'm, I'm not, you, you, I didn't invent this, is more satiating, meaning that yeah. a calorie of protein makes you feel fuller than a calorie of fat than a calorie of carb. And the reason behind that is because, two, two reasons, protein takes longer to digest. Okay, and as a result, it travels further down the gut. More gut hormones are released, and gut hormones tend to make you feel fuller. So protein tends to make you feel fuller mm -hmm. because it takes longer to digest. First reason. Mm -hmm. Second reason, protein is chemically the most complex um, of the three macronutrients compared to fat and carbs. Okay, and so therefore it takes it takes longer and more energy, crucially, to metabolize. Protein gets broken down to amino acids. Amino acids travel across our gut wall and gets transported to wherever we need it. Mm -hmm. um, it's either used to build stuff or it's stored or burnt as energy. Mm -hmm. This metabolism process costs energy mm -hmm. and it takes the most energy in order to do it. And that's why protein um, um, makes you feel fuller. And that's why these low carb, high fat diets work because you eat more protein, you yeah. feel fuller, you feel fuller, you eat less, you lose weight. Yeah, you're kind of not craving snacking so much of the sweet rubbish. No. But there's also that kind of sweet, you know, a spot or, or amount, isn't it? Because if you overeat on anything, you know, carbs, fat, protein, whatever, you will put on weight. So so we're, we're not saying everybody needs to go out and eat, you know, loads of protein. There is still a kind of a limit on, on that, isn't there? So there is a sweet spot for protein, actually. Yeah. Uh, uh, so the, the sweet spot for protein for someone who's not a bodybuilder or, or, uh, or a professional athlete, okay, just le leaving those people aside, tends to be about 16%, roughly speaking, of your total energy intake a day. Now, a, a couple of, a couple of th uh, things. First of all, when I say protein, I don't necessarily mean steak. Uh, it Good could point. be steak, obviously. All sources of protein, plant-based protein, you know, pulses, all, all kinds of things. So just, just keep that in mind. Um, because if you actually eat more protein than you need, you do put your body under a certain amount of stress. In particular, uh, um, in particular, your liver and your kidneys, okay, are, are put under higher stress. And depending on what kind of protein you're talking about, it also increases your your risk of bowel cancer ever so slightly. So protein, there is a sweet spot, and that is and and, and that is sixteen percent. So for, you know, if you're a visual kind of person, 16%, what does that look like? Because the thing is, like we said earlier on, it's about, um, you know, personalized nutrition, isn't it? For, for most people, it may be about protein, about the size of the palm of your hand, a sort of deck of cards, that kind of amount, what, twice a day, two to three times a day in terms of visually, I guess. Visually, that's that's about right. Now, once again, it depends whether or not you're eating steak, which is going to be the protein wise is denser than say you eating fish, mm -hmm. which is slightly less dense than say you're eating tofu. 
Okay. Yes. So something like tofu is going to be less dense. So you got to eat more tofu yeah. or more beans. Um, so, so, but roughly speaking, pretty much, yes, a palm of a hand, deck of cards type, type of thing. Now you, you might think about that and says, I eat a lot more protein than that. And that's true. Okay. I certainly, if you, if I ordered a steak or if I had a burger, I would far surpass uh, 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 those, those numbers. So I think, it, 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 but then you don't necessarily eat meat every single meal. Okay, so I think you need to take right. all of that into account. By that, broadly speaking, is the from a visual perspective, that's roughly what we're talking about. Yes, pack of cars, palm pack of your cars, hand. kind of size amount. Yeah, and when um, I think one of the the shortfalls for a lot of people is lunchtime because most people can get through the sort of like morning without grazing, without sweet stuff, and it's that, that mid afternoon at three, four o'clock when people are craving, you know, the stimulant, the coffee, the cake, the biscuit, whatever it is, and you kind of say, actually, you know, if you look at your lunch where was you know what was the protein content in your lunch and you'll find that for some people there wasn't really any you know um or really not enough um and i think that if people consumed a bit more whether that's in one sitting or, or split it between you know lunchtime and mid-afternoon or something like that that would help a lot wouldn't it to, to cut down on the on this craving of the refined carbs and requirement for stimulants I agree for you because I, I I can speak from personal experience. So I commute I commute to work on my on my bike quite quite a distance. It's probably just slightly under an hour cycle each way, and so I'm I get there and I'm fine and I'm fine for lunch. And now I understand that if I don't watch what I eat at lunch carefully enough, then just before my cycle ride home in the evening, whatever you know, whenever you leave work, I get wobbly. Okay, yeah. and I, and not only that, I get because it's another hour cycle home. Um, and I and I will get and I will get wobbly. And eating a chocolate bar for me then is even worse because then I get wobbly on 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 the ride. Whereas I realize that if I watch a a if I reduce my refined carbs at lunch, mm -hmm. okay. And once again, I'm not a I, I'm not a carb Nazi here. I'm just thinking from a personal uh, experience. If I have more whole grain carbs and a little bit more protein at lunch, I don't get that wobbly feeling before I actually hop on my bike um, on 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 the way home. At dinner time, what I just do what I do. But as my lunch time for me makes a big difference mm -hmm. because of my commute home. And this is a real, I guess it's a good example where I'm talking about myself. I'm not being prescriptive to someone else, but it is important what you do. Okay. So so how do you commute to work? What do you do? You know, and I think you need to understand your lifestyle and the way you respond to certain things. Okay, um, so that you can actually put together a, a sustainable, a sustainable diet to keep you healthy. Yeah, well, a plan that works for you because mm. a lot of people exercise in the morning, don't they? Or, or maybe a lot of people at the end of the day after work. So it's kind of personalizing it again for you. When is the best time in the day to consume more of, of that protein? And as you said as well, I get asked a lot about all the different diets. You know, what is what is the healthiest diet out there to achieve and maintain an optimum weight? I mean, that's just a million dollar question, isn't it? That one. I mean, because there is no one answer, is there? Because we're all different. There is, there is no one answer. Nuances and, you know. There's nuances. I mean, there are probably some universal rules that you can follow within your specific approach that you want. I mean, the 16% protein is one of them. Eating as much fiber as possible, as much fiber as possible, because none of us eat as much, none of us eat enough fiber and yeah. trying not to have as much sugar as we would like. I mean, I mean, th those are probably the three, if you, those three Real rules. Real basics, aren't they? Yeah. Basic rules. And and you can work those in, um, into whatever dietary approach that floats your boat. I mean, just, just back, to, I, I realized it didn't answer one of the questions with regards to low carb. Is it safe? You, you, you asked that question, yeah. is it safe? And and that's an interesting question because you know keto is probably the most popular of the of the yes. of the of the low carb approaches. Keto is is the most common, uh, popular not common most popular today. And people do ask me, is it safe? Well, it all depends. It all depends. Once again, now if you're doing keto with animal based protein mm -hmm. and saturated fat, okay, okay, mm. it's not going to be. Then how much are you going to? How much are you going to be able to eat without, you, you know, without any health concerns? There are some people that can eat a lot of saturated fats. That's true. But for most of us, myself included, that's a little bit dangerous to just purely do that. Now, if you were doing keto, for example, but you were doing either plant-based protein or fish, for example, or mm -hmm. white meat without, without the skin, and doing the fat largely with olive oils and, and plant-based oils. Oh, well, that's a different story. That's, yeah. a, that's a completely different kettle of fish. And they're both keto. 
So, so, so it depends on who you are, but yeah. more importantly, what do you mean by fat and what do you mean by protein? Yeah, yeah. What, what are you replacing the carbs with? Because we know that, well, I think we know anyway that carbs are important. You know, they, they are required predominantly for our brain function, but also that, you know, we talked about microbiome. We know that they're very important to, to feed the microbiome. So, so, so carbs are, are um, definitely important for your, for your brain function because they needs, it needs, your, your brain uses, doesn't use any fat. Mm. Oh, very, 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 very little. The, the why is actually more complicated than you might actually imagine. But you're absolutely right that your brain um, um, uses largely glucose. 25% of the circulating glucose in your blood is used by your brain, and your brain is only 2 to 3% of the body weight, right? Um, and ketones. The other thing it does use is ketones, which is how the keto diet um, works. Your brain is able to, at a push, use about 40% of the fuel from ketones if it has to. Okay, under starvation modes, uh, heavy exercise, that kind of thing. Yeah, but it can take a, a while to adapt, can't it? It's not an overnight thing if, if you do that method of eating. It's it's a little trickier for your body to adapt and it's it's slightly harder. And I think also as well, it'd be interesting to see, like you say, that it's not one prescriptive thing. So yeah, if, if people are doing keto, then of course we recommend more of the, the unsaturated fats um, because they will also benefit your cholesterol levels, for example. And we don't know the long-term in terms of effects of heart health and, and gut health and et cetera. So it is a bit of a, of a balance, but as nutritionists, we, we do still encourage people to have carbohydrates, um, maybe just for some people reducing the amount of carbohydrates they eat and, and maybe switching types of carbohydrates from the more refined to the more whole grain. Because let's be honest, we're spoiled with choice now, aren't we? You know, you don't need to have the, the, the boring white stuff anymore. There's lots of whole grain alternatives that are a better source of fiber, a better source of nutrients like B vitamins, etc. cetera. Uh, they may take a couple of minutes more to cook, but the, the, the benefit in terms of nutrients is, is far, far greater.